All right, I wanted to do a quick uh, video tonight uh, to talk about a blog post I did today uh, talking about how to create your own tools inside of Visual Studio Code. So one of the things that's pretty cool about Visual Studio Code is they have this concept of extensions. And what you can do is you can actually add functionality into Visual Studio Code uh, very simply uh, by just creating a uh, uh, some JavaScript or TypeScript uh, that will go out and uh, essentially, uh, you know, you can automate all kinds of things that you want to do. So there's a ton of extensions that are already available for Visual Studio Code. But one of the things that kind of inspired me is that, um, you know, I've been doing blogging using Gatsby. And I was looking for a tool that I could use that I could create markdown, specifically the markdown that I need uh, for use in my blog. And so I decided to write a Visual, Code, Visual Studio Code extension in order to do that. And I want to show very quickly, you know, how you can do that if you want to add your own extension into Visual Studio. So let's take a quick look and see what that looks like. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come over here into my terminal and there's a tool that uh, Microsoft actually suggests you use for scaffolding out a new, uh, uh, a new extension and that is Yeoman. Yeoman is very popular in the Node.js world for scaffolding out you know, different types of JavaScript projects. And so I already have this installed, and in my blog post I talk about what you have to do to get this installed if you don't have it installed already. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type yo code. And when I do that, it brings up this, uh, this tool, and it's asking me a couple questions here. Do I want to use TypeScript or do I want to use JavaScript? So I'm going to use JavaScript. And it says, what's the name of your extension? Let's just call this my hello world. That's the identifier as well, description, um, test extension. Uh, yes, I do want to use, uh, no, we'll just say no for the JS config. Uh, we can go ahead and initialize the repo. And I'll use npm for my manager. It's going here. It's installing all the dependencies that we need. And let's let it do that. It shouldn't take too long. And once that's done, it tells me, okay, well, you can go ahead and you can cd into that. So I'm going to cd into my hello world. And I'm going to open that up inside of uh, Visual Studio Code. All right. So here's our Visual Studio Code project here. And one of the things you'll notice here is that they have this package.json. Uh, there's a couple of things here you probably want to take note of. One is that you'll notice here they have the dev dependencies, but they're not using any kind of like core dependencies. And the reason for that is because uh, they don't want you including any node modules when you go to upload uh, an extension. Uh, the other thing you'll probably find interesting here is that they have this contributes section here. And this is basically where you can assign metadata to your extension. Uh, if you need to set up any settings, uh, you can do that here. Any commands that you're going to use, this is very important because we're going to, we are going to use a command in here. Uh, you can define that in here. And then you also specify uh, your main entry point. And so in this case, they're using a file here called extension.js. And if I look right here, we can see we have our extension.js. And what this is actually doing here is on the activate here, it is finding that register command. And once it finds that register command, uh, once this command is called, uh, it's going to handle this callback. And this callback, what it's doing is it's going to show an information message. So the way you test that is you can hit F5, and I'm running on a Mac, so I have to do function F5 here. And we can see here it's spinning up a uh, little runtime, and opened up this window here. And this window, uh, I actually, it's pointing here to a project that I already have, but we could open this up to you know any project that we wanted to have. 
Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the command palette. You do that on a Mac by doing Command Shift P. You can do Control Shift P on Windows or I believe Linux. And uh, I think we should see a hello. There's a hello world here. And when I select that, we can see we get this little information box that says hello world from my hello world, which if we come back here and take a look, this is exactly what we have here. So with that, I want to show a project that I created. I'm going to go ahead and, and close this and bring over this window right here. And this is an extension I created specifically just for me. And what this is actually doing here, if we take a look at this, is I have this configuration setting here. And this is so that I can set up a path that I want to use for, uh, say, if I want to create a markdown file. And then I have this uh, this command here, which is looking for my Gatsby blog post, create markdown post. And now if I come over here and I go into my extension, this is the extension I'm using here. And I'm doing a couple of things that are interesting here. Uh, one of the things I'm doing is I'm importing in uh, the path uh, file system, which are all native to, to Node.js, so you don't have to bring any node modules. But I am using Lodash here. And uh, this is a probably an example of something where you don't have to include a module to do what I'm doing here. But, uh, uh, but in this case, I want to kind of demonstrate uh, how you would do this using a uh, bundling. So if we come back down here, here's our activate command. And this is looking for that same create markdown post uh, command that I had defined earlier. And one thing that's different here is I'm calling this method here called start input process. And what that does is it goes over here and asks for a show input box. And the show input box, basically what it's looking for, it's looking for some input for what I want to give the title for my markdown post. And once that's done, uh, we get this then result here because this is a promise. And we call this create markdown folder with my result. The result is basically what comes back from calling the show input box. So if we look down here, what this is actually doing is it's looking up the current workspace for, for my project. It is getting the uh, folder path. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically just mapping that to an array. So I can use that down here. And then as long as I have a link here in my array, what I'm actually doing is I'm coming back and I'm getting my config settings. So if I come over here to preferences and go to settings, open this up, expand my extensions, we can see we have this one here called Gatsby blog post. And this has basically the source or the path inside of my project that I want to create my, my blog posts. So that's what that's for. Uh, and then what I do is I'm coming here and I'm getting a date. And in that date, uh, what I'm doing is I actually have a specific format that I'm using for, for my date. And the way that works is I'm going get to the, get the year, uh, I'm going to get the date, get the month. And I what I want to do is add some leading zeros if they're not there already so that it follows a specific kind of like eight character format with uh, two dashes in it. And once that's returned, uh, that's basically what I'm going to name the folder where I'm going to put my, my markdown content inside of that source slash blog that we saw earlier before. Once that's done here, I'm just setting up a default uh, uh, markdown file name. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try and name it or base it off of the title that I just input earlier. So in this case, this is where I'm actually using Lodash. I'm using Kebab Case to actually take that title and create a, uh, a new name for my markdown file. Once that's done, uh, I'm creating a little bit of a string here with uh, some, one, which is a front matter. Front matter is used by a couple of the different, uh, uh, you know, uh, blogging engines for getting metadata uh, about the uh, the post that you're making. And uh, once I've gotten that, then what I'm doing here is I am setting up a new path for this folder that I've uh, specified or I created just earlier. And then what I'm doing is I'm creating a markdown file. So if we go down here, what this is actually doing is just checking to make sure the file doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, it creates a file to this path with the front matter. 
And that is pretty much it as far as what this uh, what this extension does. So what I can do just to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to bring over. I believe this is my project here. Yes, so we've got my project here. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and leave that open. So I'm going to create a new blog post. And so today is the 7th. And yeah, here we go. Today is June the 7th. So I already have this folder already created here. But I want to go ahead and create a new post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Command Shift P. And I actually already have this uh, command already uh, up here because it was the last one I used. I'm going to select Create Markdown Post. Now it's asking me for a title. And today was uh, WWC the first day. And I'm just going to call this Highlights from Day 1 of WWDC 21. Hit enter. And there I just created a brand new markdown post. So that's essentially it. That's how easy it is to uh, create uh, an extension that does something useful for you uh, using Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm already using this, so it's pretty cool. And I've also also uploaded it, published it to uh, the repository of, uh, of different uh, extensions that are available for Visual Studio Code. So that being said, uh, I have some additional information. I'll put it in the details of this, uh, of this video that explain how you can publish, a, uh, uh, publish one of these uh, using uh, the VSC tool. And uh, in that way, if you just want to install it locally, you can create a VZIX file and install it locally and uh, using that using the code command to do that. Or you can upload it to, to Microsoft's uh, Azure and uh, you can pull it up that way. Looks like we have some uh, company here. How are you doing? So if you like content like this, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you can give me a thumbs down, but please give me a, a thumbs up. And... Uh, subscribe to my channel so I can do more content like this. It helps the algorithm on YouTube and I'm trying to get more and more people uh, interested in uh, watching these videos and I'd like to get some feedback. So let me know what you think and have a nice evening.